crypto, 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 NFT, NFT, NFT. You can always tell bad times are ahead when billions of dollars and big name companies are now starting to lose their money. Sadly, this is the beginning of a chain of people losing more and more money. A lot of economists feel that next year in 2023, maybe Q2, Q3, that there's a 100% chance we're gonna be in the middle of a recession. And it's going to happen for a very, very long time. So your greatest investment is not passively, in my opinion to focus on the number one thing that you should always be in control of in any financial game plan, which is control of your financial income. Do you know what everybody was talking about the last couple of years throughout this pandemic, even pre-pandemic? Bitcoin, crypto, Shibu Inu, Dogecoin, crypto, 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 NFT, NFT, NFT. And today, what are we seeing as the result of all that talk? People losing their shirts. So in this reaction to the FTX bankruptcy, and what's going on right now in the crypto markets as it relates to how people have been saving and planning for their financial future and other things outside of the dollar, outside of values and principles that get you financially ahead. The conversation today is shifting towards this whole bankruptcy, this whole challenge that we have with FTX. So when I'm, when, when I'm looking at this, you can always tell bad times are ahead when billions of dollars and big name companies, people that had a lot of credibility and a lot of notoriety are now starting to lose their money. You know, they often said that during tough times, you're going to learn more about a relationship, not during the best of times, but more so during the worst of times. And we've often said safe money strategies. We've often said here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel that we're going to find out who's been making a lot of money right now. And it was real. It was genuine. It was based on values and systems and process and fundamentals versus the ones who were making a lot of fake money. I remember coming up in business. And it was I'm 23, 24 years old, and everybody's laughing at me. I didn't go to college. I was a single dad, three kids, and here I, here I am starting the insurance business. Everybody's laughing at me because I'm selling insurance. Everybody's laughing at me because I'm planning for people's retirement. People are laughing at me because I'm helping people plan for their kids' college education, kind of setting up wills and trusts and uh, Medicare planning and all that type of type of uh, uh, work. People say, hey, how come you're not getting involved in real estate? Hey, how come you're flipping to the mortgage industry? And a lot of guys left their teaching jobs. I remember I was at the jujitsu gym and this guy says, man, I'm not going to be a teacher anymore. I'm going to sell mortgages with my brother and move to California. Next thing you know, boom, he's making a lot of money. Boom, he's racking, he's calling me. He's making me feel like, man, I need to leave the insurance business. But here's what I always said. The insurance business is always safe and steady. The insurance business, they're experts at managing risk. When you're looking at uh, uh, 07, 08, 09, when you're looking at the Great Recession, when you look back into the dot-com era, these are two recessions that the beginning 10 years of my career started off with. And I realized a couple of things. Big companies start the first dominoes to headway into bad times. So for example, I remember dot-com bubble happened and companies like Webvan went out, Boo.com went out, Pets.com went out. Next thing you know, Worldcom went out of business. North Point went out of business. And here we are sitting in a dot-com bubble in a recession. And thankfully, a few years later, we get out of it. Real estate market takes us out of it. Everybody's buying real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, mortgage-backed securities, et cetera, et cetera. And next thing you know, bam, Wamu gets bought out. Bam, Countrywide gets bought out. Bam, Bear Stearns out of business. Bam, Bernie Madoff is discovered. Why? Because as soon as liquidity starts leaving the market, fake money gets exposed. And right now, what are we seeing? FTX lost liquidity. The Stable Coin uh, Transparency Act, they had to meet certain rules and, and guidelines. They're losing liquidity. They're losing all these fundamentals that were showing. As a matter of fact, the, the board of FTX was non-existent. And so I remember watching this guy named Chamath, and here's what he said about his discovery at FTX. Let's check this out. An article that appeared that said that the head of compliance at FTX was also the head of compliance at a poker site called Ultimate Bet, which in the 2010s did this exact thing, apparently. It seems the whole issue, if you come back, like what is the first string that you pulled that unraveled the sweater, was the fact that these tokens were created out of thin air, they had no meaningful value. Somebody prescribed a value and all of a sudden, everybody else in the economy all of a sudden said, yeah, I'll take that as collateral. And here's also other commentary from Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, who's always out there to make some money. He put his money inside crypto. He's been a big advocate of cryptocurrency. He's been a big advocate of this type of investment, putting a good chunk of his uh, asset allocation in these, into these type of strategies. So here's what he said after realizing he's lost a lot of money. Let's check this out. It's not the first time I've made a bad investment. 
probably not the last time, but luckily I make more good ones than bad ones. And I learn from my mistakes. What's going to happen now is there won't be another situation like this for institutional investors ever again. We're simply not going to put capital to work until this stuff gets regulated. So as you look at the ramifications of these companies crashing, these companies filing bankruptcy, craziness happening in the market right now. Everybody's pulling back and everybody's freaked out. They'd lost a lot of money. I remember when Bernie Madoff was discovered over 64, $65 billion of money of institutional money, people's retirement plans lost because of this scandal because of this guy and his pyramid scheme is cheating everybody. And his sadly his son committed suicide and he eventually died in prison and they had to sell everything in their because it was all cheap money. It was all fake money. It was all stolen money. So they had to liquidate everything and hopefully the investors with their firm got their money back. And now you're looking at this FTX. Now you're looking at crypto billionaires with $96 billion in losses. And some of you guys might think, well, that's not a big deal. How, do you realize how big a billion dollars is? It's a thousand million. It's $96 billion lost because people, whether they call it greed, we call it lack of planning, lack of counsel, these folks changing your mind of where and how to plan for retirement, save for retirement and be financially free and financially independent. Straight up, a lot of people just getting lied to and people don't even realize they're being lied to. So we've always talked about fundamentals. We've always talked about values in principles. I remember a couple of years ago watching this interview and everybody's laughing at the Oracle of Omaha. Everybody's laughing at Charlie Munger. Everybody's laughing at Warren Buffett. They've lost their edge. They're a bunch of old men that do not know how to relate to the younger generation. Listen, this guy's been at this game since 1956. He's seen recessions. He's seen up markets. He's seen down markets. He's seen people make a lot of money. He's also seen a lot of people lose money. And I've got nothing compared to him. But I'm just simply observing in my short 23 years here as an entrepreneur and I'm realizing and recognizing certain dominoes start to fall when bad times start to happen. I'm reminded of a proverb. It talks about people looking to get rich quick all the time. Here's what happens to them. It reads like this. Wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. Now, there's two ways to make your money. Either you actively work for it or you passively have your money work for you. In my instance, I've done both. I save my money, I put it away, I've invested my money, but more importantly, I've invested in me. I can always tell you this, last 23 years, the greatest rate of return that I've ever earned is not real estate, it's not crypto, it's not insurance, it's been myself. It's improving my skill set. It's improving my associations. It's improving myself and what to look for when I'm getting scammed or somebody's trying to pull the wool over my eyes and trying to get after me and try to stick their hand in my pocket. And they're all nice. And everybody seems to play the part, seems to know the part, but I pass these things through what I call my laser test, LSRT, liquidity, safety, rate of return, and tax advantages. If they don't pass these four things, then I don't put my money towards it. Is my money liquid? Is it safe? Does it earn a decent rate of return above inflation? Does it beat inflation? And last but not least, what significant tax advantages does it have by putting my money there? So therefore I beat Uncle Sam. I beat at that time cousin Illinois. Now that I moved to Texas, I don't have to beat cousin Texas anymore for a state income tax. But put myself in a system to make financial decisions. So my encouragement to you is this, if you're watching this right now and someone's trying to tell you, put your money here and put your money there, da, 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 da. Anytime anybody tries to get you to put your money somewhere, whether it's our financial advisor, whether it's a friend, it's a cousin, or even these guys that you see online, these people that you see on TV, with myself included, pass it through the test, liquidity, safety, rate of return, and tax advantages. In my opinion, if it doesn't have three of the four, pass. It's no, it's a hard no. It has three of those four characteristics, then it's a safe bet, yes. Now, by the way, I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just giving you something that is more logical than emotional. Because a lot of people make better financial choices when they're more logical. How many times have you learned about money more from your bad experiences with money versus than your good? And chances are those bad experiences that you had with money is because you were very, very, very emotional. Give yourself a process, a system to make wiser financial choices. For me, something you might want to consider, let me know if it works for you, but what's helped me out was putting through the liquidity, safety, rate of return, tax advantage filter to either say yay or nay. The bottom line is 
Sadly, a lot of people are going to start losing more money. This is the beginning of a chain of people losing more and more money. Uh, a lot of economists feel that next year in uh, 2023, maybe Q2, Q3, that there's a 100% chance we're going to be in the middle of a recession. And it's going to happen for a very, very long time, a lot longer than normal. Predictions are it could be more than 17 months. Predictions are it could be more than 24, potentially even 36 months. I could be wrong, but expect a very long time for people to not know what their next move is because companies lose liquidity, banks stop lending, there's less money coming into the marketplace. What happens is people then start losing their jobs. People then start paying their bills. They stop paying their mortgages. They stop paying their rent. They stop paying their car. Things get repoed. People get evicted. People are in very tough times. So your greatest investment is not passively, in my opinion. It's not where you put your money. It's where your attention and your focus goes to focus on the number one thing that you should always be in control of in any financial game plan, which is control of your financial income. If you don't have control of that, you don't have control of many other things in your entire life. And somebody can snap their fingers, they can pull the plug, and next thing you know, you're in a very, very bad financial position, just like this guy at FTX did. Going to all his buddies, hey man, bail me out, bail me out, bail me out. They're like, yo dog, yeah. after a second thought, third thought, fourth thought, pass. And here he is, filing bankruptcy, resigns as CEO, and guess what? Many, many more will come right after this. So consider safe money strategies for your passive savings, but for you to be an active investor in who? Yourself, especially during tough times. The seeds of the future wave of the next generation of millionaires and even future decade millionaires and billionaires are being planted right now. Before I let you go, please check out this video right here where I reacted to KSI losing over $2.5 million in crypto. With that being said, let me know your thoughts, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put in the comment section below. Your questions, please put in the comment section below too as well. If you watch this video and this has provided value to you, please consider hitting like. If you watch our other videos, if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.